What I'm about to share with you is one of the greatest fan fictions I have ever read in my life, and it is no exaggeration. This is, like, the best thing ever, and I highly recommend it. And since I highly recommend it, I'm going to review it and read some of the chapters. <laughs> so, when I got into Total Drama again, I was like, there's gotta be fan fiction. Like, I've seen the fan art, and they're actually pretty good ones, as long as you don't go too far, but... So when I was re-watching Total Drama, I realized that, like, as a kid, I had a crush on one of the contestants. And I was like, which contestant did I have a crush on? Because I could not remember for the life of me. And then, during the introduction, I saw him, and then I was like, yup, <laughs> that's the guy I was into as a kid. Let's go! <laughs> So, I was browsing Wattpad, as you do when you have a fictional crush on something and they no longer produce anything in the media. Um, a lot of the X-readers that I found have been, like, very short or discontinued altogether, except for two. I found two really great ones that I would like to talk about. But I'm going to just talk about one of them right now, because I want to save the other ones, because, like, the other person that wrote the other book has like two other books. They did Island A in Action, which is like impressive since all of them usually get discontinued and everything. Which is surprisingly because um, this person's a very popular character and everyone simps over them, but for some reason everyone's like, nah, I don't want to write this book no more. And I am talking about Duncan. <laughs> yeah, I'm a simp. But, I have a good reason for it. Now, today's book I would like to talk about is called Totally Dramatic, a Duncan X Reader Story on Wattpad. And, um, this was written by Quotec, I believe I'm saying that right. Quotec, I think. I will leave their Wattpad in the description for you guys to go check out. I highly recommend not only this book, where they did, like, other, like a total drama one shots and everything and some other ones I highly recommend you check them out but we're gonna focus on this book um, so the synopsis is I shall read now why Anne is a crowd pleaser a golden girl in her mother's eyes she can do no wrong her father abandoned her so she's always been missing half of her so when I dare leads to her joining the total drama island cast what happens on that island will she make new friends enemies a possible lover and it's her past closer than she thinks. And then there's a disclaimer saying that they don't own anything except for the, the character of YN. And here is the... And then this is what the... I don't know if you can see it. That's the... the what do you call that again? The cover. The cover for the book. Um, this writer is so good at writing. I cannot explain like express that enough and what makes this book even better is like on wattpad if you like if you're actually a good writer and you space all paragraphs and everything uh, what you can do is you can comment on a paragraph and like say what your reaction was or how you felt and everything the comments in this book are amazing i cannot express they add so much <laughs> And, like, there's, it just got updated not too long ago, in middle of January, I believe. And I found this book when the last update was in April. So she, she is active now. I'm happy about that. Is it a she? Hold on. Let me, I gotta confirm this. Okay, so they don't have pronouns listed, so I'm just gonna go by they, them. So, they are active now. Um, and I do follow them, hoping that they would update and they did and it was like holy fuck let's go so basically we're just gonna be like an insert to this already established universe and we are going to fall in love with Duncan alright and we're going to unravel some of our past as well so let me pull up chapter one <laughs> I had to restart because I was rereading it and I was like oh shit I shouldn't reread it Cause I want my, cause I haven't really read it in a while, so I kind of wanted my reactions to be genuine, and and I think I got up to the uh, boot camp episode before I reset, so we're gonna be covering the first four chapters, I believe, just to see how long it goes, maybe five, but here is the introduction to said book. 
The first introduction is basically like ripping straight off of like the summary when you watch Total Drama Island. It's Chris going like, yo, I'm coming at you live from Total Drama Island. And he explains the rules and that there will be 23 contestants. It's just supposed to be 24, but wait, we, we are inserted in there. There's 23 contestants. They're all competing. And he basically explains all the rules and he's like, hell yeah, let's go. And then we get to our character. And... I shall read now. God, what am I doing? I pace in the boat, fearing setting into my stomach. After doing a quick muck around audition for this show, Total Drama Island, I had thought that I was actually picked to compete. I originally had been dared by my older brother who saw something about it online. Feeling bold, I'd gone for it, but any confidence I had was completely diminished in this place being anxiety. The boat rocked, causing my hands to grip the rails. This driver really doesn't seem to have control, or he just seem, doesn't seem to care if I fly off. As I brush my colored hair, locks flew in my face. I do establish now, I'm not really good at reading. <laughs> I tend to stumble over my words. So, basically, that we're on a boat, and then we get to the island, and we're like, wait a minute, this isn't a five-star island. Should I have wigs for when I do the other characters? Because I kind of want to do that. Maybe. Oh, but they're at the bottom. I only have one, like, two wigs out, and they're, like, long, tangled messes, and I have, like, a long, blonde wig. <laughs> and none of them would make any sense. <laughs> it'd be fine, it'd be fine. Maybe I could just do, like, what the, the boys do on TikTok, and just put, like, a towel on my head, and be like, that's a new character, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Alright, so we get off the boat, and then Chris does his introduction for us. Last, but certainly not least... We like to think of this camper as our golden kid, this girl who can do no wrong, YN. Chris explains, staring at the boat, stopping at the dock. Jumping out, I rolled my eyes. Golden? Really? Was there really nothing else they could describe me better with? Giving a small smile and a wave to the group, I headed near the end of the dock, planting myself with ne what seemed like a nice girl. A brunette girl smiled. Hey, I'm Courtney. I smiled. At least there's some decent people here. First things first, we're going to need a group photo for the promos. Everyone at the end of the dock. With a shuffle of feet, within the next minute, we were all huddled in a little circle type group. Me finding myself along the center of the group. Okay, campers. One, two, three. With my best photogenic smile, Chris snapped the photo with a quick click. Oops, forgot the lens cap. <laughs> Sighing, I smiled once more, a little less enthusiastic this time. With another click, the host smiled. Wait, cards full. With a chorus of groans erupting, the rest of us stood still and annoyed. Come on, man, my face is starting to freeze. A girl, I think her name was Lashana, stated. Her smile staying the same way it's been. Ignoring her comment, Chris then continued. Okay, everyone, say, Wawanakwa, as a group... Chorus the word, the cracking could be heard. Before I had the chance to look down, I was submerged in water. The cold hitting my face as I felt a cane grab my arm, hosting me back up to shore. I took in deep mouthfuls of air. And guess who pulls us out? You guessed it, it was Bridget. No, I'm kidding, it's not Bridget. <laughs> but I, I, I can let you know who it is. I'll just read the paragraph. You okay there, gorgeous? Looking up, the first thing I saw was a green mohawk. I can tell that he was the cool, t too cool for you, bad boy type. Distancing myself, I rolled my eyes. You know, I'm a big girl. I think I could drag myself out of the water. I stayed across my arms. He smirked, looking at me. Whatever you say, babe. I grimaced, looking over at Chris. Go dry off and meet at the campfire pit at ten. He walked away, whistling a happy tune. I glared in his direction. You think that's enough time to dry off? I would chuck you in there. I heard a small chuckle to my left. Glancing over, I noticed a surfer chick smiling at me. I wish we could. That'd be funny to see. I laughed, smiling the back at the girl. She was a blonde, holding a surfboard in her hand. If I get the chance, I'll be definitely be the first one to do it. I'm YN, by the way. I introduced, extending my hand towards the girl. She grasped my hand, shaking it. I'm Bridget. Nice to meet you, YN. It's nice to meet you, too, I replied, glancing around at the other white campers. We should head back to camp. I don't think that guy will be happy if we're late, Bridget explained, and I nodded, following her direction. This is Camp Wawanakwa. You're home for the next eight weeks. Campers sitting around you will be your cabin mates, your competition, and maybe even your friends. <laughs> I glanced over at Bridget. 
her gleaming back at me. Here's the deal. I'm going to split you guys into two teams, so if I call your name, go stand over there. Chris pulled out a paper with names all over along either side. Gwen, Trent, Heather, Cody, Lindsay, Beth, Sadie, Owen, Lashana, Justin, and Noah. From this moment on, you guys are officially known as the Screaming Gophers. These people over here. Jeff, Bridget, DJ, YN, Tyler, Sadie, Izzy, Courtney, Ezekiel, Duncan, Eva, and Harold. Move, move, move. As we moved to the each side of the area, Chris threw two pieces of cloth. Harold unraveled ours, displaying the sign for our team, the Killer Bass. Um, wait a minute. They have an extra person on their team? Heather pointed out, crossing her arms over her chest. Chris shrugged his shoulders. Teams are divided equally. Okay. Best thing about this one? <laughs> There's like 95 comments on this one sentence of Chris saying they're divided equally. And this one person just goes, no, because he's right, Ezekiel ain't a damn person. <laughs> And I love it. They are so right. <laughs> Alrighty, campers. Go get settled into your cabins and meet in the main lodge in 12... At 12. Okay? With that, the host left. I turned to my team, once again me and the gaze of the boy from earlier. Stare me all you want, princess. I won't complain. The boy, Duncan, smirked. I glared at him. In your dreams. I rolled my eyes, picking up my bag off the ground and in a frustrated manner. Grabbing onto my duffel bag tightly, I approached the steps of the killer bass, peering in. Only a few girls have stepped in, slowly unpacking their bags. Placing my bag on the bottom bunk under Courtney's, I looked around. This place felt like a summer camp, and not like a good type of way. But who knows, maybe things would improve over time? Cozy, right? Bridget smiled, and I nodded hesitantly. Totally, exactly like home. I rolled my eyes, and we left. I'm not gonna scream. But here's the part where Lindsay cries over a cockroach. <laughs> I hesitantly put my hands over my ears. Who had the, who had the vocal cords to scream like that? Exiting my cabin, I looked across to the other cabin. A crowd had slowly formed outside the female gof gopher's cabin. I made my way over, standing outside the cabin. Inside, Lindsay stood on the stool. She stared down in horror. A small little critter crawled across the floorboards. I wouldn't call that a critter. It was a whole-ass cockroach, but... Who's counting? <laughs> what is that? Kill it! She cried, squealing. I covered my ears again. This girl had a good set of lungs. And that was for sure. DJ jumped onto one of the bunks and break it. And that was supposed to be my bed. Gwen <laughs> muttered, sighing at the feet. The cockroach began to move and everyone went into a frenzy. I stood there, shaking my head to disappointment. Guys, don't you think you're being overdramatic? <laughs> I asked. No, but they could be totally dramatic. I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> but my voice was drowned out by the screaming. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. Were they seriously about to endure this for God knows how long? The delinquent from earlier made his way next to me, and I saw a, lo a small silver object going in his hands. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> With a crash, the axe had sliced the cockroach and the floorboards. I glanced at the boy, crossing my arms angrily. Do you know how to do anything without being violent? <laughs> I questioned, my irritation with him growing. And then he been a few hours, he was ready to get on my damn nerves. <laughs> he looked over me and shrugging. Just what I do, doll. <laughs> I grinned my teeth, hanging the nickname. God, this is going to be a long few weeks if I made it that long. The comments. <laughs> the fucking comments. Of just, of him saying doll. The, the whole summary of this paragraph was him calling us a stupid nickname and we hating it. And everyone in the comments is like, oh, please keep calling us. <laughs> everyone over here, a damn simp. <laughs> Sitting at our sign tables, the mess hall looked exactly like that. A mess. A booming voice could shout out the place, causing several people to jump upright. Listen up, I serve three times a day and you will eat three times a day. Grab a tray, get your food, sit your butts down now. Shrift booned and the hesitant campers slowly made their way. As I got my food, I watched the, the moving gray sludge jiggle across the tray. Feeling better than argue, I forced a fake smile, taking it and dropping it on the table with a slam. This does not look edible. Bridget eyed the food with caution, ready for it to jump out and eat her. I think we're going to have to get used to it. So far, I haven't seen anyone clean their plate. That's a bad sign. <laughs> 
I said, poking the substance with a fork. It jiggled with for quite some time. I pushed it away from me. I don't think I'm desperate enough to eat that yet. <laughs> I thought to myself. Our table began to make small talk, trying to get to know each other. I learned the other people's names when they announced teams, so I no longer had the disadvantage. And the team wasn't too bad. I had Courtney, Bridget, Jeff, DJ, Harold, whom I was, who I've been able to get to know. A few others have been there, including the delinquent, who caused me to muffle a groan. Why couldn't I get rid of this guy? Before I can get a word out, Chris's voice came booming through the lodge. Welcome to the main lodge. <laughs> Chris once again spoke, his enthusiastic tone causing a slight disturbance. Yo, man, can we order a pizza? Jeff asked before a cleaver shot right past his face, hitting the back wall. I saw we saw my field there, turning to see Chef's smug face. Oh, cool. Grace Lodge is cool. The blonde shirt, and we all turned back to Chris. Your first challenge begins in one hour. And that is the end of chapter one. Now, this is a pretty good, decent chapter. It is, like, the starting point for the whole series, so there's only so much material you can work with. I like how they introduce everything. My only criticism is that every <laughs> Duncan X reader tends to have Bridget as her best friend, which I get why she's the only female that, like, makes it to the merge. But, like, tell me I couldn't be best friends with DJ? DJ's fucking awesome. What about Harold? I wouldn't mind that at all. It's just, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. I believe we do make friends with the other ones after the merge and everything. But, like, yeah. <laughs> and I like how they introduced Duncan to us. It was pretty awesome for him to drag us out of the water like a fucking prince, but... <laughs> all in all, for this chapter, I give it a 6 out of 10 for establishing the world. Doesn't really add anything based off of the original episode, but I like it. I like it. It's just it's just bare bones setting up the, the environment and who our character is. Alright, chapter 2 is, again, not... So Happy Campers Part 2. It's basically them doing the, the whole clip dive and everything. I believe not... A few, a few elements happen here and there. And I shall read now. So the chapter starts off with a little like summary about was what happened last episode. Like Chris does in the original show. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. I did not sign up for this. Gwen said as we stood on top of a cliff. The breeze wi wildly flowing. In my favorite color bikini, I glanced down towards the water, trying to swallow away the lump in my throat. At this point, I don't think any of us did, I remarked, wrapping my arms around my body. Okay, today's challenge is a threefold. Your first task is to jump a thousand feet high into this lake, ex Chris explained, beaming at the campers. Looking over at him, I grimaced, I could, this could kill someone. Piece of cake. Bridget spoke, a slight waver in her voice. I gave her a small smile, squeezing her shoulder encouragingly. At least she was trying to take this slightly on the light side. If you look down, you see two target areas. The wild area represents the part of the lake that we have stocked with man psychotic man-eating sharks. Inside the area is the safe zone. That's your target area, which we're pretty sure is shark safe. You could hear the amusement in his voice. Clenching my fist, I wondered how someone can be so careless with a bunch of teenagers. I mean, I know we're in it to win it, but... This seems a little extreme. Why, Anne, you have no idea what's going to happen in these further seasons, especially in Revenge of the Island. <laughs> if you think this is extreme now, you're going to die. <laughs> At some points, I feel like Trent should have died from these stupid stunts. <laughs> Excuse me? Lashana's eyes went. Hers weren't the only ones. Many others were mumbling under their breaths, trying to convince themselves that they'll be okay. For each one of your team that jumps and actually survives, there will be a crate of supplies waiting below. Inside each crate of supplies that you'll need for the second part of your challenge. Building a hot tub. The team with the best hot tub gets to have a wicked hot tub party tonight. The losers will send someone home. Let's see. Killer Bass, you're up. Chris sent us a smirk, and I glare back, grinning my teeth. So, who wants to go first? Bridget questioned, peering over the edge. I turned to see faces looking away, not wanting to make eye contact in case they were forced to jump. Surely it can't be that bad, right? <laughs> I asked no one in particular. I stood over next to the blonde, taking calm breaths. It was just like diving, no big deal. A chuckle behind me made me turn. What's wrong, doll face? Left your confidence back at the cabins? <laughs> Duncan laughed and I glared at him. Oh, totally, you think you're so cool? Why don't you do it? Badass. Badass can fucking taunt the bitch. Taunt him. <laughs> Hey, Chris, is there a rule about how many people can jump at the same time? The host shook his head. 
Perfect. All right, princess, you think you're so tough? Let's jump together. So I can propose. And... Not like that. I didn't mean. <laughs> not like marriage. <laughs> Just ask a question. <laughs> and I saw it once more. <laughs> Glancing down at the water, fear creeping my spine. I've always been t par <laughs> terrified, <laughs> petrified of heights, and this is not looking well. You're on. On the count of three, I stayed, and the delinquent looked. Did I mention I can't read that well? <laughs> and the delinquent took a few steps up towards me. One, two, three. Without glancing, I jumped off the cliff, seeing Duncan jump at the same time. Holy shit! <laughs> I wanted to scream, but my voice got caught in my lungs. At the same time, I didn't even bother to look and see where I was jumping, which scared me even more. As I felt my body slam against the water, I swam to the surface, noticing a small circle around me. I made it to the safe zone. I sat in relief before noticing I haven't seen Duncan at all. Boo! <laughs> I should do that better. <laughs> Boo! The boy jumped next to me, re revealing a face full of water at me. Don't fucking do that, you dick! By the way, side note, real life, I'm not very good at swimming, so I'd probably be like, looking like a drowning puppy at this rate. Um, that would probably kill me if he <laughs> was fucking. <laughs> Especially salt water. This shit sucks. And, and, and it is salt water. They're on a fucking island. This isn't a lake. This is the ocean. <laughs> and you just section off part of it to make it a lake. <laughs> Don't do that, I instructed, swimming over to the boat, climbing up. He made his way up too, and I glanced up to see Bridget preparing to jump. You got this. I called it to her, and, and I saw her smile. How the fuck did you see her smile? It was a thousand feet up in the air. I guess we have superpowers. Alright. Taking a leap, I watched as she dropped into the safe zone. Woo! Go Bridget! I cheered, helping her up on the boat. I made my way over to shore, sitting on the warm sand. One by one, the rest of the team began to jump. I rested my head on my legs, slowly slipping into a slumber. I haven't slept much before arriving, and the fatigue was slowly getting the best of me. And this is a time skip, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, big, big time skip. Something was tickling my nose, making me slowly come to consciousness. Swatting it away with my hand, I slowly opened my... My EC eyes. My eye color eyes. <laughs> Looking to help adjust the sunlight. Immediately noticing the green hair, I groaned. Go the fuck away. He d she doesn't cuss. I'm just adding shit. <laughs> Go away. I muttered. Sitting up and stretching. Okay then, but if I, I suggest if you don't want to get booted off, you should help us with build the hot tub. Everyone's got the supplies there. I had the beach, so I seen the crates and been... Gone, leaving only a few straggling campers. Sh shit! <laughs> she says crap. <laughs> crap, I, I get up from the sand and begin sprinting to the camp. I hear laughter behind me, however, I did not stop. I didn't want to get eliminated already. As soon as I reached the campsite, I saw my team. Oh my god, Corny, what the fuck happened to your eye? I examined, going over to examine it. She shrugged me off, embarrassed. It's nothing, I, I promise I'm fine. <laughs> Send me a wide smile. I still felt protective of her. I don't know why. She's kind of an asshole. <laughs> Glancing at the rest of the team, I noticed that there were a few missing. Katie and Sadie. Before I can ask, Courtney, stop me. Please, just don't ask. We could really use your help building the hot tub. I nodded. I wasn't exactly the building type, but back home in some of my classes, I would use toothpicks to create little things on the table. So I guess I was sort of had experience. Alright, let's do this. I stretched my eyes, began... Trying to regain feeling. I must have slept on them because I was struggling to move them. Harold, collect the wood. Jeff, DJ, grab the hammers. Bridget, you and I need to get, get the base going. Alright, so then we build the hot tub and we lose badly. <laughs> Shit, like, it gets poked and then it, like, tumbles. I say this because nothing really interesting happened for this. After showering, I headed to the main lodge where I knew my group would be. Taking a seat, I couldn't help but feel slightly responsible for our loss. Everyone was probably tired, and yet I was the one who slept. And why didn't anyone wake me earlier? It would have been okay if, if it meant that we had a chance of winning. I had to figure out who we're going to vote off. I tuned to the conversation, resting my head on my hands as I listened to the brunette. Well, who's your pick, Cyclops? I heard Duncan speak. I gave him a glare. Can he quit giving people nicknames? <laughs> well, what about YN? She fell asleep when we had the crates at the camp. When was she helping the team? I sit up straight with a shocked voice. <laughs> with a shock, a sh a shock face. Sorry. What happened to Courtney and I being friends? Oh, there's 62 comments on this. <laughs> Someone just put, uh, "Guys, we can fix her." <laughs> no way. She helped us build the hot tub. Even though we didn't win, she helped more than anyone. 
Jeff explained, giving me a smile. Not to mention, she was the first one to jump off the cliff, DJ added. I saw D Duncan smirk. I'm glad DJ got her back. DJ the man. Side note, I want to find a good DJX reader, but all the ones I find are fucking weird. So, comment down below if you have one. <laughs> She's staying, end of story. And why not you? I mean, out of you and the brick house, the ones who didn't jump, I like our chances with him. Courtney then began to comment about her CIT experience, causing me to zone out once more. It was nice knowing people had my back, but I still was shocked that Courtney thought I would best gone. I just don't get why we lost, eh? They're the one that has six girls. <laughs> I don't know why I gave them that accent. I was trying to imitate. <laughs> this caused me to direct my attention to the conversation again. Ezekiel, the homeschool boy, was shaking his head in disbelief, causing me to become angry. What's that supposed to mean? Bridget asked as Eva, her, and I crowded him. Yeah, homeschool. Enlighten us. After this whole boys is better than girls talk, I couldn't take it. Before Eva could knock him out, I put my hand on her shoulder. Please, allow me. <gasps> With that, I swung a punch, which you can see demonstrated before. At the elimination ceremony, I sat in the stump beside DJ. He gave me a reassuring smile, and I sent him a, th a thumbs up. Looking over at Duncan and Ezekiel, I saw the delinquent shake his head. Dude, you got a lot to learn about the real world. He stated, an amusing tone covering his speech. I focused my attention on Chris, who sat up the front. You all casted your votes and made your decision. There are only ten marshmallows on this plate. I believe it's supposed to be eleven, because there are twelve people on this team, but it's okay. When I call your name, come up and claim your marshmallow. The camper who does not receive a marshmallow tonight must immediately return to the Dr. Shame and get the vote of losers, which means you're out of the contest, and you can't come back. Ever. First marshmallow goes to... Jeff, Tyler, Katie, Harold, Bridget. Catching my marshmallow, I sound a relief. DJ, Eva, Sadie, Duncan, Campers. This is the final marshmallow of the evening. I glanced over at Courtney and Ezekiel, both looking like hell has slapped them in the face. I could tell both of them won on that last morning. Marshmallow, Courtney. Chris explained, saying the one marshmallow her way. Turning to Zeke, he shrugged. Can't say I'm shocked, dude. I saw you pick your nose. That was not cool. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Dr. Shame is that way. Everyone else, enjoy your marshmallows. You're safe. For tonight. Popping the marshmallow in my mouth, I savored it. Who knew when I'd get another delicacy like this again? I found myself sitting on the, the steps of the cabin, watching the gophers enjoy themselves. Resting my head in my arms, I thought about home. Were things going to chaos now that I left? After my father left when I was a baby... My mom had gone into a downward spiral. It's up to me and my brother to take care of things. Even though I'm the youngest, I knew I was the most mature. Sighing, I continued to think about them when another body dropped beside me. Long day? I glanced over and I met the piercing blue eyes. I shrugged, facing towards once more. Possibly. He chuckled, which made me smile. Can't wait to see what McLean has for us tomorrow. God help us. This comment made me laugh. It is true, Chris was unpredictable at this rate. Maybe we'll get lucky. I piped up. Doubtful. I shrugged, letting out a yawn. Keeping you awake, am I? I knew my charm was irresistible. I allowed another laugh all in my eyes. Whatever you say, Juvie. I stood up, stretching my arms. I head to bed. You wanna sing to me a lullaby so I can fall asleep? I saw an expression of terror on his face, causing me to smirk. Night! <laughs> With that, I went to the cabin and fell asleep as soon as my head hit the floor. The pillow. Not the floor. I mean, it could have. We could have just been so tired that we just fell on the floor. <laughs> Alright, summary. This is a pretty good. <laughs> I like the way it establishes our character. Um, like how it does add to the story a little bit. Um, Corny will continue to be a bitch to us for the rest of the competition. And we're starting to get a relationship with Duncan already. And I like it. This will be like a current, like a a trending thing that after the end of the chapter, like end of the like the ceremony or whatever, the challenge, we'll have like a little bit of one on one time with Duncan to like def def further our relationship. And I know I said I'd be doing more, but I just looked at the thing. I'm thirty minutes over. <laughs> Maybe I'll just call it here. <laughs> so if you did like this, please make sure to like and. Don't forget to subscribe, because I am going to post more Total Drama-related stuff. 
I hopefully want to get through the rest of the chapters as well because this is really good. If you want to read the story for yourself, I will leave it down in the description below for you guys to check it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. It is really good if you like Total Drama or just Duncan in general. This has really good writing. I'm just an idiot and can't read, so don't take my thing as gospel for like how to fucking read, but <laughs> anyway, my name is Phoenix, and it's been great reading with you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>